Hi everyone, I am Madhulika Vajjala. I am uh, a part of Insufi's communications team and welcome to our uh, first uh, video on uh, uh, conversations with Insufi experts. We have Dr. Tejas here with us today. He, Hi. Hi. <laughs> he joined us uh, recently and is a postdoctoral fellow here. So Dr. Tejas, Hi. can you tell us a little bit about your education background? Yeah, sure, why not? So, um, I started off with, a, with an integrated master's in chemistry mm -hmm. from uh, Central University of Tamil Nadu. And after that, so, or probably during the course, I got really interested in this field called computational chemistry. Okay. And I decided to do a PhD in it. And uh, I took my PhD from IIT Hyderabad. And I recently defended my thesis. So. You could say, yeah, fresh out of the oven. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's me. So, yeah, so now I'm trying, going to try my hand at data science. So, if your background is in chemistry, how does data science play a role in that? Well, um, chemistry, if you look at it, even from the most simplest perspective, we all heard of the periodic table. Yes. I'm not giving, I'm not going to give you a lecture on it, but uh, okay. <laughs> it is nonetheless an arrangement of people. Which is data arranged in a particular order. So, I would say chemistry had data science even from its grassroots. Okay. So today, with the technology that we have around and the kind of stuff people are doing with data science, I think there's a lot you can do with chemistry and the knowledge of chemistry. So, yeah. So going off of that, would you be able to get the same knowledge in the masters, or why did you consider pursuing a PhD? Ha. Huh, so. <clears throat> Masters is not specific to a topic. Okay. It's more of a general view. But if you want to really pin down on something more specific, mm -hmm. like for my case, for instance, I did it in computational chemistry. My PhD was in computational chemistry. So it was probably one step below data science. Okay. Right. And what I do or what I did uh, has a lot to do with data analytics and analysis, things like that. So I was in a way one step below the instance, if you ask me. Okay. And do you think a PhD sort of helped you go more in depth into that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so if somebody were to consider pursuing higher education yeah. and more specifically a PhD, yeah. would you recommend that they pursue a PhD in just a domain specialization or combining with uh, data? So it's a really nice question because in today's day and age, I think um, it's always best if you have an interdisciplinary sort of an approach to it. Okay. And data science seems to find its way everywhere. I mean, everything that you touch, it has data science in it right now. So um, even from your simplest of Google searches, and anything that you want to read upon, anything, anything you would love to look into. It all has a data science component in it today. So it is truly interdisciplinary and it has a lot of application. So if you're doing a PhD, if you're planning to do a PhD in some subject, you're always better off doing it in something which has a huge applicational angle to it okay. or some sort of an engineering angle to it. So there is an industry backing it up. So because that is the way in which you can get your work to the masses. Otherwise, it stays in academia and uh, so yeah, I would really recommend doing a PhD in something which has a very interdisciplinary sort of uh, output to it. Otherwise, well, the more general question of if you should do a PhD. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you, if you ask me, I would say do it if you really, really like it. Okay, so could you tell me a little more about how a PhD is different from a master's? So, in PhD, you actually start off with a problem statement. Okay. Or, let's not even go there. Let's talk about it in very layman terms. Right? You are going to solve problems which do not have answers to. Okay. You're going to find solutions for problems which never existed sometimes. Or in other words, you're going to find out problems which people never identified and you're going to propose a solution to it. 
in that sense it is quite rigorous and it's not like a textbook course which you do you are treading your own path okay. right so in that sense the phd is very very different from a masters okay that makes a lot of sense so if someone were to pursue a phd then having the right mentors having the right team to work with would perhaps help them figure out the problem statement and the path they take absolutely Okay. So then, identifying a school that has all these is also quite important. Yeah, it's, it's very important. Okay. So if someone was from a pure science background and they wanted to enter into the field of data science, and it sounds like that's something that you did. You yeah. went from chemistry into computational, and then now you're yeah. exploring data science. Yeah. So if an individual just had science as their bachelor's or in their master's. what do you think would be what are your recommendations for the next steps um so let's look at the most basic sciences you do in school okay like your physics your chemistry your biology and probably your mathematics also mm-hmm. mathematics by nature is computational okay right yes computational <laughs> biology exists computational physics exists computational chemistry of course exists <laughs> right so all of these things have they have they've had this very a intensive computational background since at least a decade yeah i say a decade because a decade is when technology boomed in them um a lot of things which were not possible before were well, it's, it's very much possible right now you have the technology you have you have high end chipsets you have high end graphics cards you have high end computers you have all sorts of uh, other paraphernalia to support these things So I guess yes, all of these basic sciences currently have a strong computational background, and anything which has a strong computational background, by nature, will also have a data science background. Okay, so there is uh, an opportunity for anybody who wants to enter into the field of data science. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now that you've uh, graduated from a PhD and you're here as a postdoctoral student, what does that mean? So right now at Insofield, uh, we are trying to explore regions where AI can be explored in chemistry. Right? We can use AI to solve a lot of problems which are related to the petrochemical or say pharma industries, and they have started specifically looking for people who have this sort of skills. Okay. Right. So we are trying to get more into these things. trying to see how ai can be more uh, graciously applied in all these places um i haven't really started working on a project completely yet but uh, we are in the process of uh, locating a project how is the research done during a post doctoral work different from what you've done as a phd student so during your phd you are guided by a supervisor mm-hmm. and a post doctoral fellowship is probably a better opportunity to explore your interests on your own so in a way you are your boss <laughs> that's the best <laughs> <laughs> but then not quite but pretty much okay wonderful so thank you so much dr tejas and uh, thank you for listening to us Uh, as you've heard from Dr. Tejas, if you are from uh, education background that is not related to data science, mathematics, or statistics, it's perfectly all right. You can still venture into the field, and there are plenty of opportunities for people from diverse education backgrounds. Uh, and if you are more interested in learning about such programs or what these opportunities are, just stay tuned, and we will bring you more videos soon. Thank you.